Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are looking at a very interesting uh, C library. Now, this one is called Tile Engine. Now, being C99 based means you can basically run it on any operating system you want, and there are bindings out there uh, for C Sharp, Python, Pascal, and so on. So, no matter what language you want to run it in, you can make Tile Engine work. And what this one is all about is creating those retro or classic style games. Uh, so, let us just actually go take a look at an example, and then we will pull back from there. So, here I am heading over to Visual Studio. Here is uh, one of the projects you can open. So here is a platformer example. This is the code required to make this happen. It's very straightforward. Basically, we're loading a tiled map for the foreground, the background, uh, a sequence pack, a sequence and a palette. Uh, you kind of set it all up and you're good to go. So let's go ahead and run this example. And there you can see uh, what kind of graphics that you can work with here. Now, the cool thing here is they've actually gone in and they implement a lot of special effects. So let's go here and we'll show you... Um, uh, mode 7 style graphics. If you're not used to what Mode 7 is, this was like a faux 3D uh, pixel scaling mode in uh, the Super Nintendo era. And here you can see it gives you like a false 3D effect uh, and, and that's pretty much it. So it's, it's basically giving you 3D uh, via a scaling algorithm. So we can kind of look around. And that uh, flickering is what you see there. That is actually pretty much being authentic to what the OG world was all alike. So that is the kind of stuff Tile Engine is all about. Let's see uh, one more here. We'll see a uh, Super Mario clone in action. So I'm just going to set this as my startup project. Now, as you can see, this is in Visual Studio. You can run this with CMake or you can run it with... Um, Visual Studio itself, you're going to have to resolve some dependencies, especially if you're going to be building it yourself, in which case, if you're going that route, I would recommend using something like VC Package. Uh, it probably makes it as easy as it gets. If you run into some problems, it's probably because of build versus debug uh, versus release. Just set it for a release build and use VC Package Manager to, to resolve the packages you require, and you are probably good to go. So anyways, that was a quick hands-on with Tile Engine. Let's go take a look at the details themselves. So here we are, Tile Engine. It's available at tileengine.org. Now, if this sounds really familiar to you, well, kudos, you've been with me for a while, and thank you for that. I've covered this a couple of times in the past, once when it went open source, and then way earlier than that, three or four years ago at this point in time. And there's been a lot of development since. As you can see right here, there was actually a new update just uh, yesterday as it stands. Not a ton to that update, but it was definitely a capable update. We'll see that in just a second. So Tiled Engine is available free and open source, or you can basically donate, or you can pay five bucks on itch.io and get the binaries that you need in a pre-compiled version, which will make your life a little bit easier. So if you struggle with setting up C or C++ builds, maybe start with like five bucks and you're good to go. Um, but you can build this thing entirely from scratch. Of course, it is the world of C++ or C build system, so it's never that fun. Uh, it's high performance. For example, all the examples run at 60 frames per second with CRT emulation on on a Raspberry Pi 3 device. That's pretty cool. Uh, graphical features, we've got things like uh, raster effects, transforms, transparencies, animation engine built in, visual effects, and collision detection. Here is probably the simplest example you're going to find. It's creating a tile map in the foreground. It creates a window of 400 by 240. It automatically does the device scaling for you. Loads the tile map into the foreground, sets up a layer, creates a window, and then draws it forever until you close your window. And that's pretty much as simple as it gets. If you want, the documentation is actually quite good and complete. Now, one thing you're going to notice over time uh, is this guy is... Uh, it's under, oops, I'm in the wrong spot. Oops, I queued all my windows up wrong. So here we go, Tile Engine. It is under the MPL2 license. It used to be, when I previously covered it, under the LGPL license, and before that, it was actually closed source. So this one is evolving a little bit over time. All the code is there, as you can see from the commit. Uh, it is very much actively being developed. I will have links to everything relevant in the article down below, so if you want to go clone it, you can. It is, as I said, under the MPL, or the Mozilla Public License. It's not one we actually encounter that often on this channel, so I'll go into a quick explanation of what that's all about. But to grab this guy basically you clone it down um, and then you need to resolve 
these two. You also need to resolve Zlib if you're doing it on your own. Like I said, probably the easiest way if you're working from a Visual Studio is to use uh, VCPKG, the, the package manager for Visual Studio, and have it deal with all of that crap for you. Um, but just make sure that you grab the release builds, uh, the debug builds, you're going to kind of start running into problems. So just something to be aware of. Uh, there are a ton of different samples as we saw over here. There's two separate projects. There's a sample project like this, and then there's the core engine project like this uh, that has um, all of the stuff in place. And then over here, you're going to see you have a simple hello-ish world to start playing with, and that's already set up configured to use the Tile Engine project itself. So um, that is kind of the gist of it. Uh, as I mentioned earlier on, I have covered this guy already. Um, so Tile Engine uh, covered it back in July when it went open source. Now, when it went open source at that point, it was LGPL. Now it is, again, that Mozilla Public License 2, and I did a much earlier hands-on video with it. Um, so... Here we are back, uh, MPL2 license, the details are right here. So from what I understand, and I am not a lawyer, you basically, you can use this guy for commercial use and everything else. Now, the key things to, to realize here, so I'll just read the paragraph. Permissions of this weak copyleft license are conditioned on making available source code of license files and modifications of those files under the same license. So if you change the code, you got to make it available under the same license that it was released under. Uh, copyright license notices must be preserved. Uh, contributors must provide an express grant of patent right. Uh, however, a larger work using the license work may be distributed under different terms and without source code for files added in the larger work. And that is the key thing here. Basically, it means if you use it to make a game, you don't have to ship uh, the, the code, etc. So you don't need to worry about any of the licensing terms if you're using this in your own product. I actually kind of like this license. It's, it's kind of neat in that it's really kind of restrictive on what you can do with it as a code license. But in terms of making your own published title, the license isn't even going to be a matter. You basically just ignore it. You can have a pr completely proprietary license on a derived work. But that is the key part. So if you are going to make another game out of it, do be aware that there are some catches here. So here we are uh, at the guy's repository. So you see here you've got tile engine, but you've also got a couple of um, the binding classes here as well. So we've got uh, Java bindings available. Uh, we've got Python bindings available. C sharp bindings available, free basic. Uh, so if you are using C sharp or Python or uh, Java, uh, there are bindings out there as well as uh, Python as well. And there is a Super Mario clone done using C sharp using Tile Engine. So if you want to see a C sharp example, uh, this is here. So if you'd rather, you know, this world instead of the C world, you can see an example of it in action. So uh, like I said, the nice thing about being C99 is you can run it and use it on pretty much whatever platform you so wish. And that is kind of it. Now, the key thing here is we have uh, Tile Engine uh, just got a new update. So that was release 2.90. Uh, this release adds a new feature called World Mode, where all the layers contained in a single TMX file. TMX files are the files that are made from a program like uh, Tiled, or, and I think I still actually have one open. Here we go. Uh, LD. LDTK. This is a tile map file in action. Uh, it, it's uh, another option here for creating tile maps. I actually starting to prefer LDTK for simple projects for sure. And I recently just did a video on it as well. I'll, I'll link that down below. So if you want to learn about making tile maps or TMX files, that project will show you how. Uh, and any selected sprites are updated when the world position is changed. Layers take into account the parallax factor recently introduced in Tiled Editor, as well as offset values, visibility, and transparency. The sprites take their world position and have them automatically converted into screen coordinates. So here is the forest map. Here it is loaded in, and you can see the results of the parallax layer scrolling. And... Done. Plus there's classic mode, so whatever you're using before works just fine. So tiled maps are a very big part of the tile engine. So you want to check out something like tiled or LDTK as well. Uh, speaking of which, if you want some tile sets to work with and you are very, very, very quick, uh, we're at Humble Bundle right now. We're at the very end of it. So as of the time of this video, this one has just shy of two hours uh, left. I'm going to take a little bit of time to upload. Uh, but if you want to create something like this, these tile sets uh, are available um, 
a very cheap price. So if you want to get a set of tiles to go and play with the tiled engine, uh, that is a good deal that is going to expire in about two hours. Other than that, you can go to places like uh, Open Game Art, which is having a little trouble lately, but uh, there are some free tile sources out there as well. But if you want a nice collection of them, Fresh Start Game Dev Assets, I'll link that down below, but it's got like two hours remaining. Just do be aware of that. So anyways, that is the tiled engine. Uh, definitely an interesting project. It's really for creating uh, a very specific style of game. So uh, you know, let me just load up one last example so you can see some of the other examples in action. Uh, set as my startup project, let's load that guy up. And here is another example. So see the scan line effects, the rasterization. If you're going for that look, it's an excellent engine. I don't know how to shoot. <laughs> Uh, but this is the kind of stuff it's capable of. So it's got uh, animation built in. It's got tiled map support, parallax support, uh, special effects like what you're seeing here with the raster scanning and the transparency. So you can really use this to create those authentic looking uh, 16 and 32 bit style games. And the performance, again, 60 frames per second on a Raspberry Pi 3, that's pretty impressive. So anyways, that was Tile Engine. I've uh, been pretty much under active development right up to including a new release yesterday. Let me know what you think. Comments down below, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.